Hello and welcome everyone, I am Ducky O'Brien and today I'll be bringing you guys an overview of my Nano Carbon Alloy production line. It's fully automated for the most part, I mean you do have to do the legwork of getting scrap and helium from Atrox. But why don't I walk you through it, I believe I like my production line because it's material efficient. I'm gonna go over what that means. Alright. First of all, you have to build your production line on the Senia for nanocarbon alloy because it has a lot of the gases that you need minus helium. So if you take a look here, it has hydrogen, argon, and nitrogen, three of the gases that you need. Helium is only available on Atrox, but why don't we go over it? I have two condensers here. One is set to helium. You can set the repeater here. It'll keep harvesting. And then uh, you got the nitrogen here. It's pretty much set to only drop onto the chem lab when it's empty. This one, the circle is off of the storage area, but it does deposit onto a few of the slots. Can't be helped. I don't want a mass collection of gas, so uh, I, at first I thought I would want this, but after trying it out, I'd recommend blocking off the little storage slots with gas, unless you want a collection of gas. Alright, so then we have the chem lab on this side, and we're going to make titanium alloys. So we have hydrazine, which requires two ammonium and one hydrogen. We have graphene, which uses graphite, and then the hydrazine. And then we have titanium alloy, which uses the graphene, titanium, and nitrogen. So we have the production lines for each material. It's based off of scrap because I use soil conversion. I'm in the process of automating my soil conversion line. It's impossible right now to fully automate it, which is why I'm holding off on making a guide on that one. But here, just pretend these plinths are silos. These arms will grab the scrap loaded onto the storage buffer right here and this is where the material efficient part comes in i will not overuse scrap and i will not have a mismatch of resources so all the scrap that you put in will come out as nanocarbon alloy so again here i have graphite i need only i need four so then i have two scrap going into here into my storage buffer i'll only ever load two at a time i need 8 ammonium, so I got 8 scrap here. And then these arms are loaded onto a trade platform. Once this is empty, it will launch. These uh, ammoniums are being loaded into here. Again, uh, it's only being loaded when the chem lab is done. So it slows the entire production line down so that you're only producing resources as fast as you need it, as fast as you're using it. If you didn't do that, then you would have a lot of ammonium a lot of graphite just sitting there not being converted into resources at that point you're overproducing so that would be wasting scrap so here if you can see it's just waiting and then this storage is the clock for the entire build so i have only one storage sensor and as you can see it's branching out to the trade platforms the arms that load the trade platform and then the arms that load the scrap those three components need to be attached to the sensor and so this stops loading when this is full and then these start loading and then once this is empty these turn off and then it starts loading the scrap it's necessary that you do this otherwise you might reach the state where you're just loading the trade platforms and it goes off and it's not fully loaded or it's overloaded so this is the only way to get the buffer to you know do its job here now i have button repeaters acting as repeaters here onto this side as well. So let's finish going over this. We got graphite being loaded here. This is the titanite. Now I need eight scrap to produce four titanite. So there you have it. It goes into this storage silo and then it gets smelted, it gets pooped out and then this arm picks it up and drops it off here to be turned into titanium alloy. Beautiful automation symmetry. Here we have organics, we only need 4, so again I have the storage buffer of 2. And here I need 6 scrap to make 4 hematite, so the ratio is 3 to 2. Uh, so I have compound here as a buffer, so I only have 6 scrap here. Again, this takes a while 
to figure out in small rant here at which the storage sensors had single state activation so like you know it cycles between two phases and i really don't like that for production line stuff i wish it would just be like oh whenever it's full just activate and that's it or whenever it's empty just activate instead of like it has to be full and then not full and then rotate back to full uh, it kind of makes it a little bit of a hassle there but another thing is if you could detect the storage of the trade platform with the storage sensor i wouldn't need to make these buffers as much you still need to make them every once in a while but yeah can't be helped with the way uh the logic works so we got a hematite dropping in here we got organics dropping in here that gets dropped into this silo here from these arms and then these chem labs make steel uses argon and you know iron and carbon this makes the nanocarbon alloy with a titanium alloy from that production line over there combines with the helium and then the steel and here we have the argon being produced and then we have a silo of helium here which you have to go and collect in Atrox. So as you can see it's pretty functional, it's pretty, it's relatively quick. I've been running this for a couple of, I don't know how long but it does produce quite a bit of nanocarbon alloy. Obviously you require a lot of scrap so you do have to do a lot of work getting the scrap in the first place. If you need help with that, I have a soil conversion guide uh, linked in the description below. Right now, it's outdated and then it's pretty much manual. And uh, yeah, no one wants to do that. Ain't no one got time for that. <laughs> but there you have it, folks. I'm going to hover here for a few seconds. So if you guys want to build it yourself, you can take a screenshot and copy it down somewhere and use it to help you. Now, this... Like layout is modular in that you can make other resources if you want. You just have to fiddle around with the storage buffers. It's either use this tray as is if you need two. And if you need eight, just put a medium tray in there. If you need six, then just put a medium tray with some, you know, compound or whatever in there. And that's pretty much it. So this will take a, a lot of resources to build and a lot of time, but it's going to be worth it in that once you have this down, you don't really ever have to build anything ever again. You might have to tweak the buffers, but that's really easy. It's just putting a you know tray on there with some resources, depending on how many resources you need. So if you have a layout like this, you can use it to make anything you want. It's going to save you a lot of time and effort. Anyways, I'm going to end it there. Thank you so much for dropping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. Lately, I've been getting a lot of support and love on my Astroneer videos, so I really do appreciate it. Astroneer has one of the nicest communities ever. Anyways, <laughs> if you have any questions, comments, things you'd like to see or for me to build, please feel free to leave a comment down below, and I'll definitely try my best. If you guys need help with anything, or just even as a meme, if you want me to try and build anything, I'll definitely give it my best shot. Uh, this was requested by Yolo Skeet. It took me a couple of weeks to to make this uh because i don't play every day but you know i play maybe twice a week and it took me a while to figure everything out for this build i got it automation is awesome but at the same time it's really frustrating to work with but it's so rewarding when it does work <laughs> but yeah i'm gonna leave it there also i recommend not flying up too high uh it does mess with the i don't know what happens but the arms stop working or maybe the wires despawn from memory and it then stops working and it just messes up your build uh so i would recommend not flying too high it's not a problem in creative i mean in survival mode uh because you know you don't really jetpack off to the sky for no reason uh but yeah there you have it. Okay, as always, appreciate you guys dropping by so much and hope you guys are staying safe and sane out there and catch you guys next time.